doing? Welcome back to BP's Pro Wrestling Corner Hour on YouTube.com. I'm, I'm your boy BP. This is Skippy right here. Hey, man. If you guys missed my Night Raw this week, you guys missed a pretty good happening. It was, it was interesting the way things happened. Now we know the full extent of what's going on with the whole uh, draft. You know, uh, some was good, some were bad, some I don't understand. It was just unnecessary. I don't know. But uh, we're going to get right down to it. Monday Night Raw started off with uh, Becky Lynch and uh, Charlotte going at it one-on-one. -on -one. The winner of this match got the first pick for their draft pick for their for their uh, side, either with SmackDown or uh, Raw. And uh, Becky Lynch ends up winning this match, but I'm going to tell you what, Charlotte gave her a run for her money. It was a four-star match, I thought. Uh, but other than that, uh, Becky Lynch did get the first pick uh, for her match, so or for her brand. What do you think about that match? I thought it was a great match. I, I would give it four stars as well. I love that these two ladies can always have these matches together and somehow make it different, make it entertaining. You Absolutely. Know, it doesn't get stale for yeah. some reason. These two girls got to, uh, chemistry, uh, really good chemistry yeah, together. My favorite part of the match was uh, Charlotte, you know, had Becky pinned. She kicks out at two, <laughs> yeah. sits up, starts laughing. Because what? What's it going to take? What's it going to take to beat the man? And that's what happened. She started laughing, and she uh, messed around too long, and Becky turned, uh, rolled her up, and gave her a pin there. Yeah. So that was interesting. Now, next thing up was round one for Raw here. Now we knew this was going to happen automatically. I don't know what's going on with this, but I wish they would have changed the champions up. But of course they didn't. Seth Rollins he ends up going to Raw. He's the Universal Champion, as you guys know. And Brock Lesnar, WWE Champion, ends up staying on SmackDown for Friday nights. So that was an interesting pick there. Um, uh, round one still, the second pick for Raw was Charlotte Flair, the Queen. So that was a good pick for Raw. And, uh, of course, the New Day, all three members of the New Day got picked for SmackDown Live. Uh, and speaking of Charlotte Flair, her man Andrade with Selena Vega stays right here on Raw. What do you think? I, I like the first round for both sides. I think uh, I'd have to give the edge to SmackDown because you get the New Day. I mean, that, that's three guys, three awesome guys, one that just lost the world title. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a lot to be expected. Seth Rounds being with the man. You know, yeah. They, they're not going to be separated. And Yeah, there you go. Uh, and also, if you guys remember, Raw gets more draft picks on a round than SmackDown does. But I think it's going to be evening it out because, as you see, you got three for a price of one. For the new day in SmackDown. Anyway, next up, uh, Charlotte Flair's man, Andrade, was Elena Vega. And so we're going against Ali for this match. I gave it four stars. It was high flying. It was really great, entertaining action. Andrade does take the win here. Of course, for help was Elena Vega. Yeah. Uh, I give it four stars as well. You know, the Zelina Vega factor is always awesome. It's great to see Most her definitely. jump and do those hair coronas and all those yeah. things that she does to these men. And, uh, both these guys have high potential. Just a great match and entertaining. Absolutely. I mean, these guys are, again, just the chemistry. Uh, round two coming up for Raw and SmackDown. Kabuki Warriors get drafted over to Raw. As you guys do know, they are the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions now. Uh, I thought that was a good pick for Raw. And then turns around, you got Daniel Bryan getting drafted over to SmackDown. Now, that's interesting. You see Daniel Bryan over on SmackDown. Then, of course, Rusev over on Raw, as you guys do know, Bobby Lashley and Lana is over on Raw. So there you go with that. Uh, SmackDown, the new and improved Bailey, the SmackDown Women's Champion, of course, gets picked for SmackDown. Alistair Black over on Raw, and of course, if you guys do know, if you guys don't hide underneath the rock, Selena Vega and Alistair Black are married, and of course, they are on the same brand. So if you see, there's a uh, you know a little something something going on here. If you guys are paying attention. Next up, your all tag team title match, man. The Viking Raiders are going against Root and Ziggler here, the champions, but not for long because the Viking Raiders are new tag team champions for Raw. And I gave this match four stars. That was how card hitting and uh, good this was. What do you think? I give it four stars as well, actually. Um, I, I love the Viking Raiders. I, I wish they would have kept their name because I felt like that killed a lot of their momentum coming yes. up. But. Overall, these guys are great. If you don't like them, tough luck. They're yeah. amazing. IG, you're talking about IGWP, uh, Tag Team Champions, SmackDown Champions, uh, or not SmackDown Champions, I'm sorry, NXT Champions, uh, ROH Tag Team Champions, and now the Raw Tag Team Champions. the first team to ever do that. Yeah, and they have not won the SmackDown Championship yet, but uh, who's to say they won't do that? Yeah. I don't know. Always next year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Always next year for, for a draft, for sure. Round three coming up, man. Raw picks Cedric Alexandra. 
Good pick for them guys. That's a high flying guy. SmackDown gets the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn, along with uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Shinsuke, along with Sami Zayn. Correct. Is what I meant to say there. Uh, that that was an interesting pick. Uh, Humberto Carrillo, if you guys don't know who he is, 205 Live star. I'm not too. Uh, I don't really know who he is. I've seen maybe one or two of his matches, but uh, uh, Money in the Raw picks him up. So we have to see what happens there. Earlier we talked about Ali. He gets drafted over to SmackDown. Which he had a great match with Andrade. Uh, and uh, this right here is uh, interesting itself. Eric Rowan gets strapped over to Raw without, without Luke. Luke Harper. Yeah. As of now, but of course he could get drafted later on. Or he's going to go to SmackDown. We don't know. Actually, I think we do know. I think Luke Harper did get drafted in SmackDown. I think, if that's if, if that's the case. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to double check but see, that. I don't know. Are, are they going to let Eric, Eric Rowan be by himself? Or are they going to play with the team? Or what's going on here? Yeah, you know, that's gonna be interesting to see. I think he's better with the White Family or the Bludgeon Brothers, but you know, that's just my opinion. One of the things that I think always killed Eric Rowan was just the constant <clears throat> injuries. Like every time the Bludgeon Brothers, the Whites took off, it was always him getting injured. So yeah, no, yeah, that's an inter interesting. I think he's point. a very interesting character. Absolutely. Yeah, that most definitely. Uh, next up, man, we have a match between Alistair Black and uh, Eric Young. We haven't seen Eric Young since the Sanity days here. But Alistair Black, he made short work of Eric Young. Yeah. I only gave it a two-star match. So, you know, I, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, I give it one star. It wasn't much to it at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, he did uh, show a new move. Yeah. The, the what, what was it? The Dark the, Ritual? The, yeah, Dark Ritual was his new move. Yeah. He, I, he, does, he just still does got his uh, Black Mass as far as I know. Yeah, I thought the Black Mass is one of the top finishers in WWE right now. Maybe just, just Dark Ritual movies, just a, just a submission whole day he's going to be using. Yeah. So, you know, it's always good to have one or two things up your arsenal. I don't know. Anyway, round four comes up for Raw and SmackDown, and Raw picks up Buddy Murphy, one of my favorite picks. I love Buddy Murphy. High-flying, good wrestler. He's a great wrestler. SmackDown ends up picking up Robert Roode and Ziggler, the former Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, Jinder Mahal gets drafted over Raw. We ain't seen this guy in a while. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to see maybe if the Zing, the Singh brothers go along with them. I don't know. And then uh, you got uh, SmackDown picks up Carmella. <laughs> that was crazy, but here you go. Raw picks up our truth So now they're split apart. So Raw's got your 24-7 champion, 20th time 24-7 champion. You know, I don't know. Yeah, that was an interesting round, my love. Man. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm I'm disappointed about the Archie Carmella split up. I love them as a, as a group. Uh, <laughs> they were funny. Yeah, yeah they they, they yeah, really they uh, knew how to entertain us. Yeah, they really did entertain us. Uh, backstage, man, if you guys didn't see it, the Street Profits were talking about them getting drafted over Raw. It was an interesting segment here because when they was back there talking about that, the OC, all three of them jumped them from behind, and uh, I'll talk to them. Then they all three of them jumped them. But uh, after that, the Street Profits says, look. We want a match next week. Us two versus you three. We'll find a partner. So it's going to be interesting to see who the Street Profits pick. I think you said maybe Ricochet. Yeah, I'm thinking Ricochet. I don't just know. because of the history with AJ Styles. I don't think that feud's done yet. And, and they were fighting for a little bit for the United States Championship. That, so that would be interesting there. Uh, again, with uh, here we go. Ricochet going to Shelton Benjamin. I gave this match with three stars. Ricochet does it. I pick up the win. I like both these guys. Something Benjamin is very athletic, and he does his thing in the ring. Too bad he hasn't been getting more opportunities since he's been back. Yeah. But when you got a main roster that's full, it's hard. It's something like people get lost in the shuffle, man. Yeah. Know, yeah. You know. So it's that's that's what it is, honestly. Um, right. My thoughts as far as the match goes, I would say about two and a half, three stars as well. These two guys are great performers. Um, I think that they should be given a little bit more time, maybe a better build up. Yeah, and throw these guys in a ladder match, and they will tear the house down. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Uh, next segment up, man. It's the whole Bobby Lashley line thing. I'm not understanding. I bet it's funny. It's interesting to see what's going to happen with with uh, now that we knew that Russo was going to get drafted over to Raw with them. Yeah. So where they're going with the storyline, I'm not too sure. It's definitely edgier. Back to kind of. Yeah, it does remind me back of the old uh, PG era or the kind of like some Val attitude. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add to your, yeah, Bell Venus. There you go, right there. Next up, the, uh, Jerry King Lawler hosting a contract signing between Braun Strowman and uh, Tyson Fury here for Crown Jewel coming up on the 31st at 1 p.m. If you guys don't know about that, that's going to be interesting to see. Tyson Fury is looking at getting a, one hell of a payday here with the 10 to $15 million we're talking here, guys. Yeah. 
So I don't know if uh, this is going to be sort of like the whole uh, big show uh, you Mayweather. Know, Mayweather type deal. I don't know what they're going to do with this, man. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Um, I, I'll say at first I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I, I believe that this Tyson Fury, he's bringing a lot out of Braun Strowman. Yeah, I think definitely. I think Braun Strowman's given some of his best mic work right now. Um, it's definitely entertaining, and I, I'm wanting to know what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there in Crown Jewel. Well, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Round 5 coming up. An injured Samoa Joe gets drafted over to Raw. And you know what? I like this pick for Raw because I like Samoa Joe. It's about time. We're going to see what happens here. Maybe we'll give him some more opportunities here for that for on Raw. I don't know. SmackDown turns around, and uh, they enlist uh, a lister, the Miz. Great on Mike, great wrestler. You know, we all love Miz. Fantastic. Akira Tozawa gets drafted over Raw. If you guys don't know who he is, you're, you live on the block. This dude's a high flying 205 live star, which I don't know what's going on with 205. I think, as far as I know, they probably canceled it. I don't know what's going on with it. Yeah, it's done for. Yeah, I don't know. That's why we got in, like all these other these uh, high flyers getting drafted over Raw and SmackDown. And some even going to NXT, maybe even NXT UK. So we have to see what happens here with that. We just talked about this guy earlier, Shelton Benjamin, gets drafted over Raw. You know, that was a good pick for Raw. My boy King Corbin gets drafted to SmackDown. I like that pick for SmackDown because whether you like him or not, he's entertaining and he's probably the best show they got right now. Uh, who knows what they're doing with Kevin Owens? But Kevin, at one time, Kevin Owens was probably the best show. Yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah. in NXT. Exactly. Yeah. The thing I don't like about this draft around here is these some of these guys should have been taken way earlier. Way earlier. I guess Samoa Joe dropping because of his, his injury, but The Miz? Yeah. <laughs> King Corbin? Yeah, exactly. King Corbin's been drafted, I think, way up there. Uh, you know. Some of these are your top talent guys. Like you said, Baron Corbin is your top heel and he's a fifth rounder. Speaking of that, you got sixth and final round right here coming up. I'm gonna tell you guys about this in a minute. But before that happened, Buddy Murphy went one on one with Cedric Alexander here in a high flying, hard hitting match. Every time these guys get in the ring, you know they got chemistry. I gave it a four stars. Because if you do remember Last time Buddy Murphy did win the match, and he did win the 205, uh, I think it was the Cruiserweight Championship yeah. in his hometown at the time. But Buddy Murphy did pick up and win again. This guy's a star, man. I'm telling you. I think both of them are stars. Yeah. And I, I, I read Absolutely. Paul Heyman, who's running Raw right now, is a big fan of these guys, and he should be. Yeah. yeah I'm a big fan of these guys. So Absolutely. Uh, next up, man, is your sixth and final round for the whole draft that was televised anyway that we know. And as you were saying earlier, these guys, I don't understand why they wouldn't pick sooner. You got Ray Mysterio getting drafted over to Raw. Former, Ray Mysterio. Former world champion, <laughs> uh, Royal Rumble winner. Ray Mysterio. He is a legend. Back from WCW, back to ECW. You know, he's been all over. Lucha, uh, underground. This is, this is crazy. Next up, Shorty Gable gets drafted over to SmackDown. You know, Shorty Gable, <clears throat> formerly known as Tag Gable, if you guys don't know who that is. Uh, that's, that's a good draft pick for SmackDown. And, uh, I'm a huge fan of this. Yeah, game. I'm, I, I, I think he's going to do all right. I'm not understanding why he took the shorty name, but I don't know. It's that, interesting. That's a, I'm not a fan of that, but Jack uh, Gable's in ring work, I love. Oh I yeah, love. he's great. He reminds me of uh, if even if you put uh, Shorty Gable and uh, Shelton Benjamin, the old American Alpha, I love that. Or even uh, the Angle team, yeah. Team Angle. Yeah. That was a that was, There you go. Put Shorty Gable, and Shelton Benjamin, brings Kurt Angle back to be their manager. You know? Yeah, I was a huge fan of American Alpha too. Um, I really was upset when they split off Jason Jordan for the illegitimate son thing. Yeah, that was kind of weird. There. I didn't understand that. Just gets injured and, yeah. Next up, Raw drafts my boy, <laughs> Titus O'Neil. Uh, Titus World Slide. If you guys don't know who this guy is, he's awesome. He's usually backstage, Titus Catering. But he's won a couple awards too, you know, for the great stuff he does outside of the WWE. So that was a pretty good pick for Titus. O'Neill to go to Raw. Hopefully they can actually do something with Titus now and uh, give him a chance, give him an opportunity to see what he can do. SmackDown drafts Elias. I like Elias. I've always liked Elias. That's a good pick for them. And, of course, the last pick for Raw, Liv Morgan. And last pick for the televised draft as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I thought that was a good round. The uh, A lot of good value there. Elias falling simply right. because, hey, he broke his ankle. You don't right. know what you're getting when he comes back. Totally true. And speaking of Liv Morgan, where's Ruby Riot? I think they broke these what the right squad one up. Sarah Logan. You know, Sarah Logan is now drafted. Now matter of fact, I'm thinking Sarah Logan's drafted over Raw with her husband, 
because her husband is one half the new tag team champions. Yeah. So, but who, what's going to happen with these girls, you know? Uh, Ruby Wright was not drafted. Uh, we got a lot of people that hasn't been drafted. Nia Jax. Nia Jax, you know. Uh, probably due to injury on both those women, honestly. Where's Ember Moon at? Where'd she go? She just got injured as well. So. See? I'm just saying, so these injured superstars are out, might not get drafted, but they will sooner or later, as soon as they get, are, are able, but we don't know what show they're going to be set up for a good surprise return. <laughs> that's for sure. Exactly. Next up, the Firefly, the Firefly Funhouse. Seth Rollins went looking for Bray White. He found him. He found a Firefly Funhouse, and he it's burned the, it down. Yeah, the Kabuki Warriors. <coughs> I did that for a reason, because I'm going to get in that in a minute. But the Firefly Funhouse, Seth Rollins ended up burning it down. And 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 not only was I skipped the, the other match, because that other match was the main event. And uh, the, Yeah. yeah. Right. So what, what happened there, I kind of switched my accent, so... But yeah, so if you guys didn't see that, Seth Rollins did burn down the uh, the Firefly Funhouse. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on with the storyline. I like the Firefly Funhouse. I like the whole Bray Wyatt thing. I don't get it. I don't know. I like the Firefly Funhouse as well. The uh, but it does have me curious. What where does it go from here? Bray Wyatt is great at evolving. Now, I wasn't a Absolutely. fan of the Firefly Funhouse at first, and then Bray Wyatt turned into the, into this masterpiece. Absolutely, man. He's so, fantastic. He's a brilliant mind, and um, I'm glad they're letting him run off of this character. And giving him his things. own creative control. That yes. was brilliant. And, Absolutely. Uh, especially working with Tom Savini on his special effects, his, his lantern, his mask. Oh, that, yeah. That stuff's been great. Could you imagine if uh, WWE turned around and gave most of these stars their own creative control? What can happen? And then get two brilliant minds together to make a beautiful match. just like ballet, man. Yeah. Until it just makes it you know, all by some chemistry. These guys uh, can put some. Let's be honest, that's match. what gives AEW an advantage right now. There's no writers. It's they, these guys just go and they think together and they come up with. They come up with a plan and uh, yeah. See, right. Speaking of AEW, is a, a a new flavor right now. I'm not sure how long they're going to last. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, I don't know, but like I said, AEW's new flavor. They're winning in ratings right now against NXT. But I'm telling you right now, I'm thinking NXT is a better show, man. They got better matches going on. All right, you know, we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, next up, Kabuki Warriors is your main event, taking on Natalia and her partner Lacey Evans. This is out of the damn blue here, because you guys, you guys do know Lacey Evans and Natalia were bitter enemies, man, for sure. At uh, during the summertime, and uh, these two women worked together well, but they could not beat the Kabuki Warriors. I gave this match a four stars, but uh, it was. Well, it was great to see Lacey Evans and Natalia working out. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That's weird to see them actually working out. I, yeah. I give the match four stars as well. Um, it's a very great uh, overall match. Very entertaining. Yes. I love the heel Kabuki Warriors. Uh, the whole face page thing that wasn't going to work for me anyway. And uh, I love where it's headed. Um, <clears throat> it was surprising to see Lacey Evans team up with Natalia because... Yeah. I mean, she she made it personal. You talking about her father, and <laughs> I mean, how do you come back from that and then team with that person? Yeah, and how do you trust that person? But Lacey Evans is going over on SmackDown. Is that what it is? Did she get drafted to yeah. SmackDown? I think she did. That's gonna be interesting to see if her and Bailey is gonna have something going on for the WWE SmackDown Women's Champion there. But you guys, this was the whole draft. If you guys got into it, that's good. I some of it I did understand, some of it I did not understand, some of it I agreed with, some of it I didn't. That was crazy. It was odd. I don't know. I really hated the draft. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, first of all, they put out this list of names, and they p accidentally release it in the order that they're being drafted. Yeah, it was weird. Second, they split it up between the shows to have two first rounds, which was very confusing to me because you would think the first round should be nothing but your champions. Yeah, and that was not the case because I guess they wanted to have – Spice, a little bit of spice on both shows. You know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and I think they should have gave separate eligible lists, maybe. Yeah, um, that would have been, yeah, you know, that would have been pretty good. If they want to do the draft, they should definitely kind of do it. They're trying to make it look like the NFL, I think, and I don't know. I would have loved to see a curveball thrown our way, too. Like, maybe, hey, we're all drafted the one that champion from SmackDown. <laughs> or Rollins going over to SmackDown. And then, hey, we got to figure out, hey, are we going to make a trade and make this work? What are we going to do? I would have loved because I would have thought that brings some entertainment. And, and this draft was not entertaining as, at all. I thought it took a lot of time away from some great superstars who could be showcasing their talents. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, what if Raw Rawls didn't get drafted over SmackDown? Then we would have to change the strap. 
from red to blue, right? That would be fine. I'd be okay with that. And then uh, turning the WWE Championship to the red and just having it two different titles. I don't think they should have different yeah. names. You should have your Raw Champ and your SmackDown Champ. Yeah, just like you have your Raw Tag Team Champions, your SmackDown Tag Team Champions. The same way with you the women. You have a Universal Women's Champion. You know yeah, exactly. I'm totally. I totally agree with that. Right here, man, That's uh, uh, it was crazy. If you guys do not know, Eric Bischoff is no longer the backstage producer. He was replaced by none other than Bruce Pritchard. If you guys don't know who he is, Brother Love back in the day, Eric Bischoff got fired because I guess he didn't understand what was going on. He probably didn't know the wrestlers, but some of the new faces, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, I've read some reports on that. Uh, one being that he wasn't learning names. One being the ratings weren't where they thought they should be. Right. And then another one, uh, he was hard to contact after he went home. Yeah. And Vince McMahon loves to go all throughout the night. And, yeah. hey, it's not a job for somebody. I think Eric Bischoff wasn't prepared for what was going to be expected. And I don't think maybe he was taking it too seriously right off the bat. But, hey, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, again, you guys, uh, 1 p.m. on October 31st on Thursday, Crown Jewel is coming your way. And we got uh, a couple matches here. We got the... Of course, Seth Rollins going one on one against Bray Wyatt in a Falls Count Anywhere match, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for the Universal Championship here. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's going to be interesting. We'll get, make a video about that. I'm disappointed about that. I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. Uh, hey, we just had a brand split, a draft, and you have Bray Wyatt from SmackDown yeah. facing Rollins for the Universal title. That right. should not be the case at all. But yeah, we're going to see what happens there. Uh, they did pull Seth Rollins from the uh, the tag team, or no, what was it? The, team the, the Team Flair, Team Hogan deal. So somebody's going to take his place. And uh, matter of fact, we're not even done filling them teams out anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So that's going to be interesting to see. Tyson Fury going one-on-one -on -one against Braun Strowman. You know, we're going to see how that uh, ends up. That's going to be an interesting match for Crown, Crown Jewel. And another match I, do, I don't understand. I'm really, not, I'm really not in favor of it because they don't need the WWE Championship for this match. It's Brock Lesnar versus Cain Velasquez. I don't understand that. Yeah, That's I weird. think you made your story simply by being, hey, it's Rey Mysterio's family. You messed with family. Now now the enforcer of my family's coming to get you. Right. That would have been its own. It does not need a title. I do not understand it. Right. Exactly. Uh, I got a list of uh, names here, guys, uh, that, that happened. If you guys don't know, if you guys don't know a full list, Raw ends up picking up EC3, Eric Young, Sin Cara, Becky Lynch, OC, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Ricochet, Bobby Lashley with Lana, Alexa Bliss, Kevin Owens, Natalya, the Viking Raiders, Nikki Cross, the Street Profits, Seth Rollins, Charlotte Flair, Andrade and Vega, Kabuki Warriors, uh, you know, Rusev, uh, Alistair Black, Cedric Alexandra, Humberto Carrillo, uh, Eric Rowan, Buddy Murphy, Jinder Mahal, R-True, Samoa Joe, Akira Tozawa, Shelton Benjamin, Rey Mysterio, and of course Liv Morgan, Tyus O'Neill. Now, SmackDown side, Apollo Crews, Drew Gulak. Heath Slater, Tamina, B-Team, Roman Reigns, Bray White, Sasha Banks, Braun Strowman, Lacey Evans, The Revival, Lucha Haas Party, Heavy Machinery, Brock Lesnar, The New Day, Daniel Bryan, Bailey, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Sami Zayn, Ali, Robert Rudin, Ziggler, Carmella, The Miz, King Corbin, Shorty Gable, Elias. These are the names that were televised, well, that some of them weren't, but we found who, where they were going. And, you know, free agents we already talked about. We talked about Tamina. Or not to me. We talked about uh, what? Ember Cesaro. Moon. Yeah, Cesaro, Ember Moon. Uh, all these guys has already got uh, places now. Some are going to Raw, some are going to SmackDown. You thought Cesaro was going to NXT. Yeah, I really did. I... So, you know, AOP, where are they going to go? Dana Brooke, you know, uh, Zach Ryder, the former champion, Zach Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, former tag team champions. You got Noah Jose, Drake Maverick, Fire and Desire, my girls. You know, where are they at? Another uh, another of my girls is uh, Di Cox, Sarah Logan. We talked about her earlier. You know Naomi, the Usos. What's going to happen with these guys? Maybe they say got a storyline for them. We talked about Luke Harper earlier. So you know, you know with the Usos and Naomi, I I think some legal trouble. They're going to keep them away for a while. Just like Jeff Hardy, uh, they should you know. be punished some way, and and to release them and let them go to competition isn't quite uh, fair either. Yeah, I don't think so either. So you got like like Mojo Mojo Raleigh, a lot of these guys uh we don't understand or know where they're gonna go. But uh, one more thing uh on your list, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross were traded for Ronald Smack though. There you go. That was the big trade to happen. But Raw didn't get no one back. Future draft considerations is what I That was it. Future draft considerations, what does that mean? I mean 
you know, you see that in the NFL and, and all that, but yeah, like... They're trying to make it look like more than NFL, and I don't understand it. I don't get it. And I, if you guys don't know, a lot of these wrestlers are uh, kind of mad about this whole kind of draft. They don't, they don't like the way it uh, was handled and like the way things went. Maybe some of them didn't like where they went, but uh, others didn't. But yeah, there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, whoever was in charge of this draft, I'm hoping it was Vince McMahon. And honestly, if it was, go to the XFL. Leave this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, worst case scenario, let Hunter take over because you can see that Hunter's brilliant. He knows what he's doing. If you're not watching on NXT anyway. Yeah. So, speaking of, hey, look, man, I want to thank you guys for joining us here on uh, BP's Corner right here. Uh, BP's Pro Wrestling Corner right here. Uh, yeah, but until next time, we're going to be right back here uh, for your NXT and your AEW reviews. We'll probably be here for your Crown Jewel pickup, you know, get, get all in all of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, if you guys want to catch all our videos, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to everything. There's a little bell up there to hit that post notification so you get all our videos. So hit on that. Tell your friends, your parents, your mama, your daddy, your girlfriend, boyfriend, dogs and cats. It doesn't matter. Tell anybody you can just to. Uh, Oh, me and Skippy, because usually uh, there in uh, once a month, we're, we'll be somewhere different probably at the Cordy Compound. If you guys haven't seen that yet, that's interesting. And uh, speaking of that, uh, I want to give a shout out, a huge shout out to Miss Martina Cordy. She's fighting the big fight right now, and uh, I hope uh, everything works out. Prayers are for me and Skippy. So we love you guys. We love you, Martina. We love you, uh, Chad. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Until next time, thanks again for joining us right here on The Corner.